so let's go more brisk into corners check it out the rear wheel steer is doing really wonders with this car hello guys Ivan here and welcome to a new video so today we are here with the new GLC 2024 and in this video we'll check out the exterior interior and also we'll go for a drive and special thanks to MG Performance Center right so much for having us here today with the new GLC uh, what I want to talk about when I will drive the car is comparison with the, the compact uh, level of the cars and also with the C-Class and here we'll check out the exterior uh, quickly and also the interior I showed you this car in full detail last year all right so here we have the plug-in hybrid version so you can go about 100 kilometers that's about 62 miles on a fully electric charge so um, that's really really amazing because daily driving you can do on electric most of the people drive uh, up to 100 kilometers 62 miles for their the, uh, commute during the day so uh, that's uh, really great it's even lower I think the average and uh, this car can deliver that if you want to go further you can go and uh, turn on the diesel engine also if you run out of the charge you can just turn on the diesel engine or also comes in a petrol so this one is actually very nice metallic the diamond white which I really like it's not sunny today so that's a little bit um, problem to show you this uh, paint in uh, full glory but uh, it's very nice pearlescent um, color this one is more like a luxurious color the diamond white and also the car turns off uh, itself if you are uh, not in the car you can see these are the LEDs you can just uh, turn it on I will show you quickly the interior and you can see there the charge so we are at 79 charge 81 kilometers and 20 kilowatts is the charging maximum but if you turn on the quick charge you can get up to 59 kilowatts we will check out the interior as well so here a quick walk around these are the digital lights with projections these lights can cut out and the ongoing traffic and also project symbols like when you change a lane it can project um, on the road like uh, arrows and, and stuff like that symbols if there are road works it can project that as well so uh, yeah very very nice technology 1.3 million micro mirrors in each headlight so um, yeah those are amazing we can actually turn them on so you can see this car also has a night package so uh, the window trims are darkened as well as here the mirrors so here are the digital lights when you have main headlights these daylight running lights DRLs are actually more dimmed because you don't really need them as much but if you don't use them the main headlights then they are much more bright during daytime so this is how it looks and you can see also here the distinctive design of the GLC very popular model and this car also has the package where you can get the aromatic air suspension and also real wheel steer so uh, yeah I would highly recommend to get this because the aromatic it I didn't really expect that but it works so so great in this car the aromatic it's um, really I would even say very close to GLE so uh, GLE has also aromatic so yeah wow really comfortable and it can soak the bumps really well as well and also the car is quiet we are on winter tires I, I just noticed that right now I thought we are on summer tires so winter contact TS 870p these are full snow tires so not all seasons um, these are 285 40 20 inch and on the front uh, we should have a more narrow size for better grip so 255 45 20 so I'm actually surprised on summer tires this should be even quieter but it's very quiet I didn't even notice that we have uh, winter tires amazing or the tires are also uh, very silent as well so uh, yeah I really like the GLC SUV and also the coupe I cannot really tell you which one I like more if you push me I would say coupe because it looks less like an SUV I'm not SUV fanatic 
uh, I prefer sedans, smaller, like lower cars. But if I have to choose an SUV and I don't really need the practicality, then I would go for the um, for the coupe. But yeah, if you want to load it up to the headliner, then it's better to have an SUV more practical for sure. So let's turn it on once again so you can see the rear taillights. We need to start the engine one more time. We don't have the start-stop in the plug-in hybrid. In uh, uh, petrol or diesel, in the ice, you have this. So that's also the difference. So you can see here the taillights, uh, simplified version in the Mercedes-Benz has taken approach to have more simple design for the tail lamps. So you have these straps, they are different thickness, so they are not flickering in, in real time, but I have a 60 frames per second for the video, so it flickers like that. Also in between the tail lamps you have this uh, like a bar, which is not illuminated. Looks pretty nice and uh, sure they're like reminiscent of the EQ models, but yeah, I don't, know, I don't know, for me it doesn't really do that. It uh, looks like, a, I don't know, like a trim piece there, so looks nice. So here is the GLC 300DE, the plug-in hybrid diesel, Mercedes and Formatic version, of course. Here you can find the charging on the left side. You can see, you can also do quick charge thanks to this CCS. So um, not many cars have this in terms of the plug-in hybrids. That's the and that's why a Mercedes is unique in this way. And on the right side, here we have the diesel tank and AdBlue is only for the diesel for, to like lower the emissions. You can see here the B7, B10 diesel and tire pressures as well. Also, I really like the side steps uh, with these rubber dots. It looks sort of like off-road-ish. You can also use the roof rack here, roof box, and we have a sunroof, large sunroof as well. And yeah, the whole car looks really great. I'm, I like this equally as well as the C-Class and it drives better than the C-Class because of the Airmatic. So in terms of the C-Class, you can get the Airmatic also only as a hybrid. With the GLC, you can get the Airmatic also with the ICE versions. 2.0 liter diesel engine and hybrid unit is here in the back with the batteries. And yeah, let's go for a drive. So first, let's talk about what got me surprised uh, about this car and that is how comfortable it is with the Airmatic. So if I compare this with the car without the Airmatic, it's a very significant difference. And also if I compare this to the C-Class for example. So um, you can also go and check out here the off-road mode. So the car will raise suspension and you can also see uh, on the screen off-road menu. And you can also see the car is scanning uh, with a front camera image. You can see also, check out the angles here, direction where we are headed. If we go slower, then you can see. So when we go slower, you can actually see on the camera what is underneath. So uh, it can scan the road. And if you go faster, it can show you the front angles as well. Very nice. Here is the Apple CarPlay. You can have these uh, on the Google Maps, Apple Maps, and also, for example, Waze, which I'm using now. So in comparison with the car, which doesn't have the Airmatic, it's a huge difference. So I just had a battery hold in terms of the driving uh, modes and the battery hold will actually hold the battery charge. So it will give you a possibility to save a battery for later when you arrive the city center for example or um, destination where you want to have a quiet car. But uh, yeah, we can still drive here in electric mode. So check out uh, how nice of an experience uh, this is. The car has also full assistance system package, so it can actually slow down based on the surrounding speed. And 
and uh, it can also recognize that we are going to the roundabout and then we have upcoming 50 kilometers per hour as well so it can see the traffic signs which are ahead it can also slow down automatically on the roundabout so right now I actually drove around the roundabout without me uh, pressing any pedals the car did that automatically also we are slowing down because we are entering the city here and yeah even on winter tires this is a very very quiet experience on summer tires these had to be this has to be even quieter actually also the car is driving itself in terms of the acceleration and uh, braking So here in the middle you can actually change what you can see there you can have also here the navigation in the middle this is the classic version i believe yeah it's called the classic one you can also turn on the heads up display so i can see it nicely You can change also for the sport in terms of the screen or understated navigation for example on the full screen. The car recognized that we are outside of the city and it's speeding up uh, without me so automatically. And it also now know that we are heading towards the 70 speed limit also going downhill and into the left here is 70 and the car is already slowing down so it can predict uh, upcoming speed limit so it can actually arrive to that speed already at that speed so it doesn't work on a camera system because that would be already late and the car would need to brake significantly more and in this way the car knows that uh, the speed is coming the speed limit so it can uh, decrease the speed very gradually and slowly so uh, that makes it very comfortable in terms of the comfortable driving so this is how uh, people want to be chauffeured around i think with the smoothing accelerations and smoothing braking i think harsh but it's not slow check out the, it's picking up the speed pretty fast so um, that's very nice and wow this is so silent so comfortable check out how much windy is now we have double glazed windows as well crazy also the car can know that we are uh, we have we have the sharp bent on the road so it can slow down to yeah to accommodate that it's not that slow it's not that sharp that it, i would personally slow down i like to drive sporty but this system is not aimed at the sporty driving it's rather aimed at um, comfortable pace now we are also entering the city so it will it already breaks and uh, we will arrive the city already at 50 kilometers per hour so yeah but this system is not lazy it's not like super slow super it's yeah it's really calibrated well so um it can do this uh, changing of the speed and braking uh, very nicely it's also quite hot here so i will decrease the temperature also it can steer automatically keep you in the lane and also keep distance with the vehicle in front you can set the four levels here i use it uh, usually uh, on the level one or level two that was also traffic alert uh, traffic announcement for the radio is now cold so yeah sometimes with the temperature of the ac i need to find the ideal temperature but the ac is very quiet i cannot even hear it uh, when the temperature is already 
uh, established and the level which I wanted. So yeah, it works really, really nicely. Also here we have the off-road menu, so uh, you can check out where we are heading now, the northwest, also the steering angle, also the tilt angle of the car. So you can check these as well when you are driving. So all in all, really fantastic experience. I would even say that uh, you should go for the GLC instead of the C-Class if you don't really want C-Class. If you are like in between these cars, I think um, you will be more pleased with the Aromatic in the GLC. Especially when you live in an area where you don't have the best roads. So. If you absolutely love the look of the C-Class, then for sure go for a C-Class. But if you are like in between, uh, I would suggest the GLC, maybe even GLC Coupe, because it, this that one looks um, more sporty uh, as well. Now we don't have the best uh, surface, so it's more loud in terms of the tire noise. But the wind noise, it's barely there. And outside it's uh, windy, as you saw. Wow! Really, really uh, huge difference. So here you can see car, how the car can steer itself. Very nice. You need to hold the steering wheel, the steering wheel is actually capacitive. So before the previous generation of the steering wheel, you need to like wiggle with it. With this one it's uh, enough to hold it. So it can sense that you are holding it and uh, then the uh, system can uh, proceed. Some corners, some bends are too sharp for it to take them. So uh, you always need to pay attention. And um, yeah, most of the time, in terms of the bands, it's always the best on the highway. But outside of the highway, I would say you need to take, um, you need to be um, very cautious of that. So this is very close to GLE. So uh, also, if we compare this to GLE, you can get very very close in terms of the driving experience to the. GLE so you can get very close in terms of the driving experience to the GLE for a lower amount of the budget for the lower budget also it looks I would say more modern than GLE GLE is a facelift with two screens and the previous layout of the dashboard so this one is more modern as well so um, yeah I would be probably even torn to, to get the GLC instead of the GLE. When the GLE will be new generation, of course, that's a huge step. And that's what is happening with the GLC. This is a new generation, that's why we are seeing this huge step. Also, with the hybrid, you can uh, have a little bit more stiff even with Aromatic, I think. Uh, but I didn't try the version with Aromatic, uh, which is ice version. But usually, sometimes, uh, yeah, that's the case. So, uh, if you would have a ice version, then it's even more comfortable than this one. But this is very comfortable. It soaks everything very nicely and also um, the connection uh, of the car with the road is really amazing as well. So now it can drive itself, this car basically. It's, it's slowing down here as well. So, uh, yeah. Also, because of the rear wheel steer, this is very easily to maneuver in the parking garages and uh, stuff like that. In the shopping malls, so uh, in tight areas, very easy. And uh, uh, in higher speed, it can actually elongate the wheelbase and in the slower speeds it can shorten the wheelbase uh, which may, will make the car feel much more 
easy in terms of the driving dynamics. So yeah, the whole time the car was driving, uh, not myself. Alright, so we can now check out the sport mode. This one uses, of course, the internal combustion engine. In this case, the diesel version of it. And I have to say, this car is really not aimed at uh, faster pace driving. It's more targeted towards the comfortable driving. So you can use this if you want to overtake someone uh, fast. But also the suspension is more stiff, but you can uh, make it less stiff in individual mode, that's, that's true. But uh, yeah, I have to say this is not really something I would use uh, often with this car. Battery hold, this will actually hold as much battery as possible. And it will use the combustion engine as well, as much as possible. Sometimes it thinks that uh, there is a lower speed limit But I didn't saw anything like that So we are now using the battery hold mode which in this case as you can see we are driving on electric right now so it will switch off the engine when it can do some section of the road without the engine only on the EV mode so it's like auto starts off in a way it works like that but it preserves as much battery as possible basically so there's also a mode in which you can get a lot of uh, electric driving and also here we have the hybrid mode with this one also switches uh, between the electric and the combustion but in this case it will use first the electric range so here in this case we have the battery hold which will switch up uh, the modes uh, as well then we have the off-road mode and individual as well so uh, those are which you can use in individual you can make the engine response in a sport and you can also have the suspension in comfort so in, in this case you have to brake yourself the car will not stop so you need to brake because we are at the red light what you can hear is probably the car yeah, that I think it was the car behind me. And we are now on battery hold and it needs to use the engine to go uphill. Also on the heads-up display, I hope you can see, we have the information about the route. I watch for pedestrians as well, it shows me on the screen. So yeah, sometimes when people are walking on the road you need to turn, it, turn this off and drive yourself. But uh, when you have normal situation on the road, you can use this very easily. So on the heads-up display I can see the route guidance. And also when should I arrive. Also here we have the AR in terms of the navigation. So it will show you arrows where you should go. Also on the heads-up display I can see uh, on the roundabout, roundabout where should I go. Camera so you can see. We will just park here.
you can turn here to touch display you can turn on the front camera so you can see how far we are to the end of the parking okay so yeah very good all right so we continue with the drive we are back in the fully electric mode Yeah, this car is also pretty agile for being a plug-in hybrid. So I'm really curious to try the GLC 43 and also 63S the four, with the four cylinders. So if you are in electric mode and you push the pedal uh, up to the pressure point you are going in electric mode but if you push all the way then it kick starts the combustion engine uh, because it knows that you want as much power as possible the maximum acceleration otherwise it will always keep you in the electric uh, mode so you don't need to fiddle with anything, just press on the accelerator and it will go into full acceleration. So this combines the diesel engine, you can have this version also with the petrol one. And we have uh, 197 horsepower for the combustion engine and 136 for the electric motor. So together we have 333 horsepower. So this can accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour in only 6.4 seconds. So that is pretty uh, fast for this kind of car. You can also get the 400E, which is a faster version of the petrol plug-in hybrid. And then if you want even more power, then you have to go to the AMG side uh, of uh, options. So the GLC 43 and uh, we have also then the GLC 63S. There is no more 63 without the S. You can get only the 63 as an S version. Both of those are with uh, 2 liter as well, petrol and uh, those are with the handcrafted engine from a Paltry by the home of AMG. The 43 actually has a version which is without the hybrid and the 63 is a version which you have a E3 hybrid which is different to this one. This one actually is aimed to give you maximum range in electric but uh, the 63S with a P3 hybrid will give you small range but faster recharging and uh, using the power so uh, it's really great because uh, in terms of the power it can give you a very nice amount um, of the discharge and recharge very fast for the plug-in hybrid also in the race mode it can overload the engine and recharge the batteries without you braking so that's also a really great. From the front they look the same for the first time, exactly the same. And from the back uh, you have a difference of the basically the tailpipes which are round on the 43 and more like a squared on the 63. So yeah, let me know which one would you go for. I think there is a difference about 33,000 euros between the 43 and 63S and uh, I would probably be torn towards the 43 more because um, for driving like this the, the 43 is plenty of power so uh, if you want top dog then yes the 63 would be better choice but for comfortable driving like this and occasional sporty driving 43 I think would be plenty plenty of uh, power
and that sporty feeling which you get with the AMG so I think it would be good daily driver for sure Alright, so now on the quick charge, as I selected this, without the quick charge it will take much longer. So if we turn this off, you can see 1 hour and 15 minutes. And if I sell a quick charge, it's only 30 minutes. So much faster, that's uh, up to 100%. If you want, like uh, 80%, that will be only 22 minutes. But I want uh, full charge, so it's uh, half an hour. Alright, so now let's check out the boot. With the hybrid you have uh, batteries and electric motor, so you have uh, actually lower volume for the uh, storage space, for the luggage capacity. And yeah, it is what it is. It's a, bet a location of the batteries, uh, which uh, has that, but still it's it's nice uh, size. Not that problematic. These are the charging cables. You can also lower the seat here if you press this button it will just fall and also here you can lower the car if you need to load something heavy into it so if you press here the car will lower thanks to the airmatic so it lowers only the back check it out it goes down and the front is uh, more upwards and uh, yeah I can feel this it's uh, much lower now so yeah, if you have something heavy, you can lower this and then it can, it can go back up. It actually is doing very quickly. They stink and here are the back seats. You just need to click them back into place. And the front seat goes back actually automatically, uh, electrically. Here are just my stuff. You can see how the rear looks. And yeah, in the previous video I showed you the room, it's pretty spacious in the back. I have tow hook, so if you press it will deploy automatically. Then you can tow a trailer. Yeah, you can also retract fully automatically, check it out. And you can close this roller in the boot. Uh, if you want, you can get actually a net which will connect there and you can actually, but I think you need to order this from the factory and uh, then you can have that net here. Uh, also, if you have a dog, for example, you don't want the dog interfere with the passengers or the cargo capacity um, or the luggage if you don't want to fold this if you have something uh, here. So if you have it like this, check out, you can only use this amount for of the space. Uh, for additional luggage capacity with the GLC Coupe then you have basically the same as if you have only up to this volume so you need to decide what is more important uh, for you also if you want to carry something long uh, with folded seats as well so yeah that's in terms of that I think the car looks very very good um, in this spec and yeah I really like this spec also, you can do 360 walk around uh, once again. Check on the lines here and also there in the back. Very nice cut there and also here. Car looks very sharp and, and athletic, but also like around it uh, because of the added benefits of the aerodynamics. So, yeah, I think this generation of the GLC is really a uh, big success. Here behind the Mercedes stand we have a radar for the Distronic and assistant systems and also we have a camera so it works in conjunction uh, with the cameras. Also there we have the heads up display you can see there. So it's also available and yeah, huge success. The wheels are gloss black in this case with the silver outer rim and also the wheel arches here are painted. So uh, you should order that, uh, it's a possibility to get it painted. The car looks uh, much more luxurious thanks to that. All right, so we'll 
go a little bit on the highway and we will finish the test drive. Car is really agile here. So let's go more brisk into corners. Check it out. Wow, really amazing. Can the rear wheel steer is doing really wonders with this car. So uh, that's why I'm also very curious about the AMGs. I think these AMGs will be amazing, uh, these GLCs. We'll just break here. That was also blind spot monitor. And yeah, I can show you here how this car works with the distance, uh, the Distronic. So we have now the first, first one. So we will go as close as possible for safe distance uh, to the truck in front, to this uh, lorry or uh, what is it called, like a tier. A huge, huge truck. Also here is one with the ship container, so we will let him go. So this is set to 100 km per hour and we are currently doing about 77 because that truck is going 77 about, 75. So uh, we are keeping safe distance. I would say this is about 1 to about 2 seconds the distance in time between uh, us and the vehicle in front. Minimum safe distance for this. Uh, you can also do uh, two level to press twice. You need to press more because if you press twice it will give you four. So now we have more distance between us and this is probably like a three seconds. So I think this is very safe. Probably nobody drives like this. Uh, on the road you can see they are very close to each other the, uh, all cars basically there's a problem in, in I think everywhere is the, this is a problem and uh, when the car in front brakes you can if you don't see where you are going you can crash very easily so uh, that's a big problem if you want to maintain uh, more distance then you can go to level 2 that's I think safe Level 3 or 4, I think it's too much, uh, honestly, so, uh, yeah. These calculations, sometimes uh, they're like too much. Uh, but yeah, you can keep very nice distance here. And uh, it can also steer, check it out. It can change lanes automatically as well. We have upcoming speed limit as well and on the navigation screen you can see here how much charging spots are available and uh, that's also good to see the charging speed here in the tunnel of course it's more loud but it's always uh, allowed here but uh, the level is very good in terms of the insulation so um, huge step up compared to compact cars so uh, even C-Class I would say it's more quiet than C-Class but even like uh, CLA, A-Class, GLA, GLB all these are more uh, more noisy than the GLC also you can see the ambient lighting here change for a couple more in terms of the colors the multicolors very very nice so this can give you a sense where you are much less tired when you are driving with these systems so that's a huge benefit, uh, this sort of stress release, that uh, we are not stressed about the driving. So when we will have, uh, for example, now we can try the lane change. 
I think you need only to like a press. Yes, lane change to left. So this is now changing lanes automatically, but I have to hold the steering wheel, otherwise it will not uh, will be doing it, it will cancel that as well. So I really like also the, the whole concept of this in terms of the comparison of the GLC and compact level of the cars which I like in A-Class and CLA in GLA and GLB uh, if we compare I like this more than the GLA GLB and also much more um, yeah for daily driving much better this one and the uh, uh, GLA GLB I think but also the price is uh, higher so if you go for the top GLE specs like GLE 250 or GLE 35 AMG you can get a lower spec of this uh, for sure or probably GLA 45S and the GLC 33 is about uh, 10,000 difference so um, yeah, if you want you can get the GLC 43 with basically a very similar engine to GLA 45 as you will have less dynamics, uh, less power but on the other hand you will have a more grown-up car, the larger car for daily driving more silent car, so uh, I would probably go for the GLC 43 instead of the GLA 45S if I would seek this kind of uh, car so yeah guys, I think that's it for this video. Let me know how you like the new GLC in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you soon in the next video. Have a wonderful day.